The European continent has seen some significant political changes in the last decades, concerning a rise in far-right anti-establishment and anti-immigration parties in most countries, the relating immigration crisis of 2015, the Brexit vote in 2016, and the following turmoil between the EU and the United Kingdom, as well as the Russian annexation of Crimea and the war in eastern Ukraine. In this series, I will try to take a look at the political leadership across the European continent and give light to the development in some of the countries outside the main news coverage in most major nations. After the election in February 2020, Michel Martin of the Fianna Fáil party was elected Prime Minister or Taoiseach of the Republic of Ireland. The formation of a coalition government of the traditional enemies of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael in order to keep out Sinn Féin from power. An agreement was made to shift the position of Prime Minister back to the leader of Fine Gael, Leo Varadkar, halfway to the next election. Varadkar is serving as Prime Minister between 2017 and 2020. Even though the armed conflict is now 20 years gone and the IRA and its successors are enjoying far less power and support than they did during the Troubles. The question of a unified Ireland still affects the politics of the island nation to this day. The subject of Brexit brought once again the question up for debate, and a permanent solution for the border across Ireland is yet to be established. The United Kingdom has, despite voting to leave the European Union and establish more national freedoms in 2016, been the centre of the European debate ever since. Current Prime Minister Boris Johnson of the Conservatives was elected Prime Minister after Theresa May stepped down in 2019 and led the Conservatives to a victory in the elections later that same year. The Conservative majority in Parliament allowed for a Brexit deal to be passed. The politics of the UK is based on a winner-takes-all system with 650 local constituencies, meaning that the Conservative Party enjoyed a majority in Parliament despite earning 43% of the votes. The island nation, consisting of four countries, has also seen some nationalist developments within its borders, and Scotland, led by the Scottish Nationalist Party, SNP, voted to leave or stay in the Union in 2014, only to see the Leave campaign missing out of victory with a few percentage points. The Brexit vote, in which a majority of Scots voted to stay in the EU, has brought the issue back up again, but a second referendum does for the moment seem unlikely. Germany is the largest country in the European Union, both in terms of population and economy, mainly due to highly successful exporting industrial and technological sectors. German politics is dominated by the Conservative Christian Democratic Union and the Social Democratic Party for Germany. The political leadership of Germany has been stable in comparison with most other European nations, with Helmut Kohl being elected Chancellor between 1982 and 1998, followed by an eight-year-long social democratic leadership. In 2005, Angela Merkel rose to power in the Christian Democratic Union and was elected chancellor, a position she has held ever since. Despite criticism during the Euro crisis in 2009 and onwards, and criticism from the right for her stance during the refugee crisis in Europe in 2015, when Germany accepted a large share of migrants arriving on the continent, Merkel has remained as chancellor. In 2018, she was accompanied by Annegret kramp karrenbauer as head of the CDU and she has announced that she will not seek a fifth term as chancellor in the 2021 elections. In Austrian politics, the former domination of the conservative Austrian People's Party and the Social Democratic Party has been shifted with the emergence of newer political forces. The nationalist and right-wing Freedom Party gained traction in the late 20th century and received 27% of the votes in the 1999 election. After losing much of that support in the following years, they formed government with the Conservative Party after the elections in 2017 under Chancellor Sebastian Kurz. A vote of no confidence in 2019 toppled the government, but Kurz regained his seat as Chancellor after the snap elections that fall and formed government with the Green Party. Kurz is to this day the youngest head of government in the world, at age 33. Mark Rutte is the Prime Minister of the Netherlands since 2010 and the leader of the Liberal Conservative People's Party for Freedom and Democracy since 2006. After the government collapsing in 2012, the Conservatives formed government with the Labour Party, 
after once again being elected the largest party in parliament. After a record long period of negotiations, in 2017, Rutte formed government for the third time, with three other liberal and conservative parties. After the 2017 elections, the Party for Freedom, led by Schert Wilders, is the second largest party in parliament, being elected on a nationalist and anti-immigration platform. The party has one sole member, Wilders himself, and is hence not eligible for government funding, falling short of the 1,000 member threshold, and is therefore dependent on outside donations for finance. Belgium is simplified, divided into three regions, the Dutch-speaking Flemish region, the French-speaking Walloon region, and the capital of Brussels. Parties in the Belgian parliament follow these divisions to a great extent. Sophie Wilmes is the current prime minister representing the reformist movement, a liberal coalition of three French-speaking parties and one German. The government of Wilmes was appointed permanent after a time as a caretaker government in March 2020, as a response to the current COVID-19 crisis. The capital of Belgium, Brussels, is the home of many significant institutions of the European Union. Luxembourg has a population of just over 600,000, and about half of the population have other descent than Luxembourgian. The small landlocked nation is together with its neighbors in Belgium and France, home to several EU institutions. The Christian Social People's Party has dominated in Luxembourg since World War II and has been a part of almost all governments ever since. Current Prime Minister since 2013, Xavier Bettel of the Liberal Democratic Party has though been able to form government twice with the Socialist Workers' Party and the Greens. Liechtenstein is a small landlocked semi-constitutional monarchy, bordering Switzerland and Austria and is German-speaking. With a population of just 38,000, it is ruled by Prince Hans Adam II as head of state and Prime Minister Adrian Hassler as head of government. He represents the Progressive Citizens' Party, the largest party in parliament and the more conservative of the two major parties, the other being more liberal patriotic union. Switzerland is like previously mentioned Belgium, linguistically divided, with four official languages in German, French, Italian and Romance. The landlocked nation is home to the second largest UN office in the world, but did not join the UN until 2002. It is also not a member of the EU, even though it holds close relations to the Union. Switzerland has a tradition of direct democracy and holds many referendums. The Federal Council has seven members and acts as head of state. They elect a mostly ceremonial president for year-long terms, and for 2020, Simonetta Somaruga of the Social Democratic Party holds the position. The Swiss parliament has by tradition held several parties, unlike its larger neighbors, there is a political scene dominated by two rivaling parties. In the latest election in 2019, conservative nationalist Swiss People's Party received most seats in parliament with 25% of the votes. After decades of a political scene dominated by the traditional parties in the Conservative Republicans and the Socialist Party, newer political forces are changing the landscape in France. Current Prime Minister Emmanuel Macron of the En Marche Party, founded by himself in 2016, represents a new liberal wave of French politics. His main competitor in the last election in 2017, Marine Le Pen of the National Rally, represents a rather different wave of nationalism and Euroscepticism. The National Rally, previously National Front, has under Le Pen softened its image and changed stance on several more controversial issues, but remains strong in its opposition towards the EU and immigration. The approval rating of Macron went down significantly during his first year and a half in office, but has since then turned up slightly again. During his presidency, the so-called Yellow Vest movements gained media attention with their protests against rising fuel prices and a general high cost of living. As President of the Republic, he elects the Prime Minister as Head of Government, and after Edouard Philippe resigned in the summer of 2020, Jean Gasté was elected new Prime Minister in July. <laughs>